Hello, and in this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to use the following graph to make various estimations on the derivative. Um, now the student here has provided us with this graph, as well as the three different estimations we need to make, but I would like to point something out right away. We have here s equals f of t, and then we also have the average. So right away this should be setting off alarm bells in your head that this is a problem on rectilinear motion, seeing as s is often the variable used for position as a function of time, where of course v stands for velocity. And in fact, if you were to take another derivative of this, you would get the acceleration. But either way, uh, let's not labor on with these types of things. Let's start with a. I'm going to use this graph to estimate what the derivative is at f of 2 which of course, you know, f prime of 2 is derivative at f of 2. Now I've already drawn out the point at f of 2 here, and notice that its position is 2, 2. But if we look around it from about 1 to 3, with uh, x equals 1, t equals 1 actually, it should be t, and this is s. Minor details. Um, with t equal to 1, the value for s is about 2.5. And then with uh, t equal to 3, oh, sorry, uh, the value is about 1.5. There's my mistake there. Now if you remember your uh, equation for slope, it's the difference in y's over the different x's. So this will give us 3.5 minus 2.5 and that's divided by 3 minus 1 and that's going to equal 1 divided by 2 however um, as a matter of habit, I always put the larger numbers into the slope formula, but notice that this is uh, decreasing, it's going downward. So this is actually going to be a negative. So the answer to f of a is negative one half. And again, the way I did that is I just picked some points right around the, uh, the place where we're estimating the derivative for, and I put it in the slope formula. And I'm fairly confident this is a good estimation, too, because notice the graph here is approximately a straight line at this point. <coughs> Anyways, now that we have the answer to A, let's head on to B. Uh, B is going to be doing the exact same thing, only we're going to be doing it at uh, f of 6. So this point right here is 6, 4. And looking right around it, we can say maybe 5.53. And right up here, we can say maybe 6.5 and 5. As our two different points. So we'll just plug those right into the slope formula again to get ourselves an answer. However, I'm going to do this into my head to save a little math. 6.5 to minus 5 equals, I'm sorry, difference in y's, sorry. Uh, 5 minus 3 equals 2. And then 6.5 minus 5 equals 1. So the answer to problem B is going to be positive 2. Again, these are approximants. Let me change my color here for the final problem. The last one is going to ask for V average on 3 to 7. Now, I already took the liberty of right now 3 and 7, and there are different points there. Notice what it's saying by V average. V S is our distance as a function of time, V is our velocity as a distance of time, and velocity is the derivative of our distance. So what this is really saying is what is the derivative, the average derivative from 3 to 7. So once again, we just put this into our slope formula. 
So difference in y's over difference in x's gives us 6 minus 1.5. divided by 7 minus 3. And that's going to equal 4.5 divided by 4. And if you divide that out, you get hmm. okay, let's pull up the calculator. 4.5 divided by 4, 1.125. So the trick to all of this is just remembering that the derivative is approximately how much the graph is changing at a particular point. So to do estimations, would just really take the change in a graph over an interval. And that gives us about the right answer. If you go back to our lecture on the rigorous definition of the derivative, we actually use this fact to drive the limits, and you just take the interval as the limits as the interval goes to zero, which is um, that's how you get your derivative. Hopefully this is all helpful for you guys. Keep sending us more questions.